Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. <laughs> what Nora went through, or more accurately, what she became in the last two years, was a man. Yeah, a little bit shorter on the top. Okay. No, and Nora didn't get a sex change operation. She did it the old-fashioned way, with acting and a disguise. And then there's the theatrical component. Ah, so just easy Tarzan out on your chest a little. Ah, good. Juilliard voice teacher Kate Murray coached Nora for months on a program of movement, breathing, and speaking. I want you to be the best man you can be. I want All to, to incorporate some of the subtle and not-so-subtle characteristics of being a guy. Notice what men do. If they need to suddenly grab a taxi, hey, they just do that. Whereas women will ask for a taxi instead of demand one. When all the pieces are together, hair, makeup, voice, posture, style, the transformation is complete. Walk like a man, walk like a man, walk like a man. And Nora Vincent becomes Ned Vincent. Walk like a man. So it never gets cold? Where are you back in Australia? Throughout the project, Ned dabbled in the art of picking up a woman. Where'd your friend go? We went with him to this bar wearing hidden cameras. This is my friend JC, I'm Ned. Nora was reminded that in this arena, it's women who have all the power. We sit there and we, just with one word, no, will crush someone. And the thing is, we don't have to do the part where you cross the room and you go up to a stranger and say the first words. And those first words are so hard to say without sounding like a cheese ball or sounding like a jerk or whatever else. And what do you guys do? Keep in mind, she's a lesbian. And even though she's probably had to do approaching, approaching as a lesbian is nothing like having to approach women as a man. No, because your guard is down. Right. The woman's guard, I mean, the woman's guard is down. Right. It's not the same, same thing. Right. So she had to do it as a man, and she hasn't been a man most of her life, so she's not even comfortable in that. And look at... Nora says the brush off Barbara Jones gave Ned was typical. She was just sort of emblazoned with hostility. You know, just looked at you, and you saw everything cross her face, which was... Oh, God help me. Not again. I'm trying to have a drink with a friend, and I've got to deal with you. Barbara was trying to dispose of Ned before her friend returned from the bathroom. Anyway, we haven't seen each other in a while, so we're just going to head out. Yeah. We've got to head out But Ned returned and told Barbara the truth about her gender. You saying you gave us all the lines, like, try to get rid of us. I see, and as a woman, I have such sympathy. I'm like, oh, I hate being this guy that you're trying to get rid of. You know? Talking to a woman, Barbara seemed more open and friendly, and in the end, actually apologized for how she had treated Ned. So I'm so sorry for being bitchy. Uh, please. Oh, you're not one of them. Oh, all right, you good. Yeah, I'm sorry for being bitchy. You guys want to talk about rejection, man? I'm, man, I'm gonna tell you guys one of the craziest rejection stories I ever had. Oh. I'm talking about such a big L to this day, it scarred me. So in my young years, I was doing my thing, went to the gym, the girl behind the teller, um, <laughs> I, I was like, what, what, what you laughing? Cause you told me about this shit. No, she's laughing. This shit is brutal. I'm laughing, okay? Ah. So I, I ask for her number, right? And she gives it to me, I'm like, cool, Friday. This is, keep, keep in mind, it's Tuesday when I get her number. I'm like, Friday, only go out after you're doing your shift. She's like, great. Oh okay? my God. So I go in, go do my workout, leave, feeling myself, you know what I mean? Cause I got her number, she was kind of cute, you know what I'm saying? So, we texting during the week, and on Thursday, she stops responding. But I'm like, we already agreed to Friday, so it's all good. You know what I'm saying? Young boy going to show up to the gym. All right? I show up to the gym. Yo, stop laughing. Yo, stop laughing, nigga. Why are you laughing at my pain? Yo, 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 get up here and be respectful. No, no, get up here and be respectful. No, it's your moment. No, it's not, because no, you're no. laughing in the back. No, no, no. No, no, you, you're in the up. back. What do you I'm mean? I'm setting up. Nah, bro. I'm out here having a moment. I'm you need to be up. up here. I'm setting up. You're not. Calm down. I can hear you. I can see you laughing. I can see you I'm laughing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jeez, I'm sorry. All right, let's go. Nah, yeah, exactly. So I'm going to have my pain. So you're going to be on screen, be respectful. Okay. You're okay. going to be respectful. Yeah. Please. Man, your, your voice cracking up. Yeah. Okay. It's pain. I, okay. Go ahead. So what happened? So Friday comes, right? And I show up. <laughs> I can't do it. Yo. I can't do it. You're going to sit here. Okay. And you're going to. Uh, listen. I'm sorry. Okay. Right. So what happened? All right. Friday happens. 
So I show up there Friday night for closing shift, right? And I'm waiting for her to come off her shift. I wait outside. Very respectful to want to show up at a workplace. You know, we cool. And I text her. I'm like, yo, I'm outside. We good to go. 30 minutes close. I see the gym close the doors. So I know she's closing up. I'm waiting. I'm chilling. <laughs> Just keep on going. This, this is the most painful part. Can you stop? <laughs> okay. Yo, Elizabeth, if you're watching, turn this off. So, I see the doors open, and out she comes with another man, right? This guy's like 6'6", big old white dude, right? And I see a tag cab pull up. And I'm staring. I'm, I'm maybe like 50 feet away. I'm like standing at the edge just outside of the light, you know, because it was nighttime. You know, they had a little lamppost, and I was standing in the darkness, staring at these two living their best life and they come out and they start getting into the cab and just as I think they're about to see me I look to my right and I see some bushes and I jump inside the bushes <laughs> <laughs> like it's a Metal Gear you ever seen Metal Gear Solid <laughs> where they jump where you, you just press the box and he's just inside <laughs> So I'm inside these bushes. <laughs> Bro, I've never been in bushes in my life. Despite mm -hmm. being African, believe what you will, i never been in no bushes in my life. I'm hiding in these bushes, waiting to hear this cab pull up. And it's like a little bit of a roundabout, right? The cab starts going, and then it circles around and comes right in front of the bushes. I hear the... <laughs> I hear the window get pulled down, and then I hear a voice gay. Hey, we know you're in there. If you guys are enjoying today's video be sure to like and comment like okay? it like it comment it helps out that algorithm today's video is sponsored by surfshark vpn so vpn is basically an application or a web extension that you could use on your web browser or on your internet to mask your ip address basically hiding your location from whatever website you're interacting with now you might think why would i want to hide where i'm at it doesn't matter well unfortunately there are places that block you based off of your ip address and so if you're trying to view online content on let's download certain things based off where you live those things could be restricted now i like watching tv shows feel me sometimes they're foreign feel me and when that happens basically i use a vpn to be able to bypass that so i can watch what i want to watch because i feel like the internet's at its best when everything's accessible if you use promo code abba and preach you get 83 percent off plus three months free so take advantage of the deal watch what you want to watch and don't be restricted by anyone's barriers you deserve to go wherever you'd like to go So I hear them close up the window of the taxi cab and pull out and they just drive and uh, I can see the car leaving the parking lot. And I just sat in the bushes for like another two minutes. You sat in the bushes? <laughs> sat in the bushes. For two minutes? I did. Just looking back at your life. I deleted her number and I never went back to that gym. Oh, yeah, man. That's real. I'm crying because of your pain, bro. <laughs> and I wish I had a good ending for you guys. Why I'm saying like, <clears throat> you know what I mean? There's no good ending. She got she got chlamydia after. I, I wish I had some. I got nothing. There's no justice. <sighs> yeah, that's life. <laughs> that's life. But uh, anyways. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm good. So, 
these are some of the experiences that, and I got a couple other ones like that. Some brutal, brutal rejections. Jeez, tell us another one. No, no, that's that was enough self esteem blow for me for one day. <clears throat> but I just want you ladies to understand mm -hmm. what some of that rejection feels like. You really enjoyed that, eh? It's just, it's a fucked up story, man. It's not you. It's just the. You know what it is? What is it? Not only I'm petty, I'm a fan of pettiness. That was petty. Yeah. That was mean and petty. Because just... when he rolled down the window and said, yo, we know you're in there, the back is like, I'm about to fuck your girl. Oh. <sighs> Not Mr. Steal Your Girl. Mr. Fuck Your Girl. Oh, bro. This is it's just. Oh, Jesus yeah, man. Christ. It's yeah, just... man. Oh, it's, it's. Oh. Yeah. After that, I changed my. Um, my username online to Supreme Gentleman. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> That's a joke. Why would you do <laughs> But you were at the gym. <laughs> Bro. 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 <laughs> Uh, Shout out to the Ginyu Force, but uh, but yeah, man, that's some real shit. And listen, rejection is part of the game. Like I said, I would. We used to do this thing where we would go out and like you would do all this corny stuff with sharpies and talking to a bunch of strange women. So you get used to the rejection. But that one stung. I ain't even gonna front y'all. That was early in my time getting used to talking to women. So that's definitely the kind of L that will uh, mess you up. And listen, I was super dusty back then. That was, was a that I, was a big L. Rest big in peace. L. You think I'm dusty today? I was really dusty back then. So you can imagine how often these kinds of things happen. And also the funny thing is my best friend, the guy who I used to go out with, and we were in the military together. He's extremely handsome. So if you want he, any he, reminder of how unfair life is, I used to go out with this nigga and he would pull all the time. And he wasn't that good. Shout out to you, Mustafa. You know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? He, 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 he look good. I seen him. He's well put together. Like yeah, yeah. It, it, it is what it is, right? So, yeah. like, but I was like, damn. But that's just the way the game works. So, as a man, you just kind of have to accept that burden. Or you could just sit home, watch anime all day, and play video games. Which you did both. Damn right. <laughs> damn right. You did both. Damn right. You, you. Damn right. Bam. Crazy times. But, again, this is one of those things that women will never understand or have to. The same way guys are not going to understand the fear that women feel sometimes when they're walking home, whatever. Yeah, and that, and that fear is real. Right? They, they're never going to understand. So she gets in there. She's like, damn. What guys have to go through is difficult. Yeah. And she said it, too. She said, and can crush your soul with just a few words. Yeah. And, you know, it comes back to that whole thing where it's like a lady asked me. Why do guys do that whole cat calling thing with like, hey, baby, uh, and I heard someone else say this, but they say it's just a preemptive strike because guys already know that these women are probably going to reject them anyways. So they start to act outside of themselves to blunt the damage of that rejection because these guys want intimacy. They want closeness with women, but they know that if they are themselves or they believe that women are going to crush them. So they create this alternate persona where they're like really gross and blah. Hey, baby, you want to, huh? So when a girl says no, he can just be like, oh, whatever, huh? But deep down inside, it's just self-preservation. Because at the end of the day, I still approach. But yes. She gave me the rejection that she gave me, but at least I gave her a reason to reject me. Yeah. Because if I go just there, I'd be like, uh, hey, I just noticed, no, ew. Mm. That hurts. But if I like, yo, baby, yeah, you look good. Ew. I'm like, yeah, the, your ew matches that. Yes. So it feels it feels less bad. Here's the difference between men and women. Women can feel rejection, right? They can feel rejected by a partner. They can understand that. Yeah. The problem lies in when you guys get rejected, even if you guys don't go out of your way to ever approach people, you can still get offers. People will still approach you and try with you. As a man, if you are mediocre or below, if you don't put yourself out there, nobody will ever proposition you. Ever. So when you deal with that rejection, you know the choice is either die alone or go and put yourself out there and make an effort. Yeah. So that's the difference between the existence and, you know, Especially when you're less attractive. My my younger days, man, were rough. You know, when your other homies, like, when girls approach, but they just want to fuck your homie. If you don't know what that's like, yep. to be the, the invisible one when you go out. And a lot of ugly girls understand this as well. Yep. But guess what? Even the ugly girls 
will have dudes approach them. Cause just dudes you don't want. I'm saying the ugly dudes get nothing. And this is also buried throughout like online dating statistics. Like make a, make a profile as an average to ugly woman. You'll get a lot of matches still. Maybe not matches you want, but if you swipe on everyone, I promise you, even if you're ugly, you still gonna end up with matches. A dude, if he's ugly, he got bad pictures, he could swipe as long as he wants. Because a girl, a girl has to be presentable. He will match. Because he will match. But you know who it's gonna be? Bots. A girl has <laughs> to be presentable. A guy, if he's presentable, he still has to go out there. <laughs> Are you still talking about these special fit models? Yeah, the, the, the bro, bro, bro. I can't tell you how many times the first few times I was on online dating, I matched with a beautiful chick, and I was like, oh. Yeah, and she's like, so go check out my tiny chat because I'm, bro, by that time, by the fifth time I've seen that shit, I already knew. So every time I would swipe right on an attractive woman, I'd be like, is this a bot? And then sometimes the girl would be real. I'm like, oh my God, uh, excuse me. She's like, unmatch. <laughs> you played yourself twice. <laughs> if you guys know what I'm talking about, you guys ever thought a woman was a bot and she turned out to be a real human being? That one hurts. Oh, yeah. But yeah. it's people sliding my in my, like, I had flashbacks. But people sliding in my DM and then I'm rude. And I I'm had like, oh, flashbacks. You person. understand? When you dusty and you ain't never had a hot girl respond, you match with even like a seven. And you be like, <gasps> this is a bot. Are you a bot? Is she a real person? And you already fucked it up. It's like, ew, a bot? What the fuck you mean? I'm a real person. And she's just, but yeah, that, that's what I was saying. What I was saying was girls have to be presentable. But guys, even when they're presentable, they still have to go out there. Yeah. and get rejected. Yeah. So that's the difference. Yeah. Does that kind of living in the skin of a man in the bar scene, in the dating scene, give you a different kind of respect for men? It gives me a, a certain definite sympathy. Um, and I don't mean that there's any disrespect, but it, it just makes me understand what's going on. Nora, as Ned, also went on about 30 dates with women, mostly arranging them on the Internet. Did you have any fun? Rarely, rarely. It was, it was just an ordeal. Unpleasant. Yeah. She says the pressure of Ned having to prove himself was grueling. Nora was surprised that many women had no interest in a soft, vulnerable man. My prejudice was that the, the ideal man is a woman in a man's body. And I learned, no, that's really not. There are a lot of women out there who really want a manly man. Ultimately, Ned told most of his dates that he was Nora. Many of the women reacted angrily. That shit's a trap. It's not. And it's interesting hearing her say this as a lesbian, too. Why? She's already used to going on dates with women. Yeah, but it's not the same thing. But that's my point. Yeah. Right? Because you'll hear that. Like, oh, you, you think girls can't have game? What about lesbians? It's not it's, the same. It's not. It's not the same. Right? And so there's just an interesting thing where she's like, even she's used to approaching women. Yeah. But the moment she becomes a man, she understands the different body. The, the, the different, absolutely. Yeah. I'm not dealing with the same shit. The guard is up, so. Oh, man. But anyways, let us know what you guys think. Do you guys feel there's a imbalance there? What's some of your worst rejection stories? Leave it in the comments. We oh. might read them out in the video one day. Yeah, we want to hear. This is going to be real. Because there's real shit out there. Oh, man. There's some real shit out there. Yeah, I'm down for that. <laughs> Hit us with your best story. All right, that's it. Deuces. Yo, sorry about that. It's just the way you said the yeah, story. Up, okay. All right, we good.